Mark impressed me from the very beginning. Now, I'd been a Rhodes Scholar, which already is a sign of distinction, a Canadian boy guy, but the breadth of his knowledge of brain science was remarkable. I could tell at the time, and turned out to be true, was that Mark was going to be one of the great scientific minds of our era. I could also tell that he was going to be one of the great guys of our era. Mark's work has really uh, has been fundamental to understanding how connections in the brain are wired as the brain develops and for the purposes of Burke really understanding how to rewire the brain after it's damaged. I also became more and more fascinated with how those learnings could uh, potentially be applied um, to understand how we might be able to help the nervous system rewire itself after injury uh, and trauma, such as stroke or spinal cord injury. He's not just a neuroscientist. He's someone who, when he was at Genentech, was working on cancer. He was working on immunology. He's developed that real breadth of understanding about all the different aspects of medicine that you get in a pharmaceutical company. His great knowledge of the basic science of development is now being reflected in the dark side of disease, and he's linking those two areas together. His work on regeneration is classic. His work on Alzheimer's has been extremely influential. I'm passionate about fundamental research. I'm passionate about applying that. Um, I'm also passionate about building bridges between the academic sector and the commercial sector. We need both, really, to move forward uh, in our efforts to make the discoveries and then apply the discoveries that will enable us to help patients with poorly treated diseases. First, we must, of course, continue to work to reverse the decline in public investment in basic research. From my years in the private sector, I can say from experience that industry builds its applications on the fundamental discoveries made in academia. You can't apply what you don't know, and history has shown that truly transformative knowledge comes from curiosity-driven research. That we're now we're just held back by how hard we're willing to work. He's more than a leader. He's a public intellectual. He's highly articulate. He can take sophisticated, nuanced ideas and express them in ways that every one of us can understand. The cost to society today in the United States alone is about $280 billion a year, and that's where money changes hands. We had labs side by side from each other for 10 years. So for me, it's, it's very special to have Mark come back to Rockefeller University and now be my boss instead of my next door neighbor. Well, Rockefeller is unique per capita in its strength and scientific power that it brings to bear. I'm very fortunate because I really have two loves. One is the love of, of the science, trying to understand and apply uh, that knowledge. The other is for team building and building institutions. Uh, at Genentech, I'm very proud of the, the organization we built and grew. Here at Rockefeller, I'm also just thrilled about what we're doing together with the faculty members here to build the community further. And I just feel privileged to have that opportunity to be able to, to work on both fronts. His wisdom is accessible to everyone. And, and there is a generosity, a spirit um, that is rare. And having Mark as a leader is bound to have a major, major impact. Um, so I'm very hopeful for what will happen to medicine in general and to medicine in New York in particular. We're getting critical mass in terms of the, the knowledge that we need um, and the technologies we need then to apply that knowledge to developing therapies. I love what I do. I can't wait every day to get up and get to work and to focus on advancing our understanding and advancing the applications of what we already know uh, in order to help patients.